Hello and welcome back to another Out of Spec Reviews video and welcome to another Inside Magna series. We're actually in Europe, in Graz, Austria right now, where we're going to be having a quick conversation with my new friend Kurt about how new automakers can actually bring their vehicles to market. So we know, of course, there's tons of concepts and ideas. And I always make the joke that you and I could, you know, start a company that says we're going to make an electric car that goes a million miles on a charge, cost $35,000, and we'll take all the reservation money, go off to Aruba, and we'd be set for life. But what happens if you actually wanted to bring your vehicle idea to reality? A lot of startup automakers don't have the capacity that, you know, an existing OEM would have. They don't have big factories, big R&D facilities, and so they have to come to a facility like Magna or a company like Magna where it's branded more or less as a one-stop shop. So I want to learn a little bit more about what that means, a little bit of the technology that goes into the uh, R&D process, prototyping, and then all the way up to the start of production of a series production vehicle in volume. These are really, really hard things for new automakers, and I think Magna might have the solution to help. So let's hear what Kurt has to say. All right, so let's say hello to Kurt. Hey, how are you, sir? Good. Great to see how you. How are you, Carl? Pleasure to welcome you in Graz here Yeah, today. thank you. So the last time I saw you was in Boston. Correct, Just yes. a few weeks ago. Yes. And uh, so now we're here. This place is amazing. So is this where you're based out of most of the time? Yeah, I'm based out most of the time here in Graz, which yeah. is our single largest facility within Magna. Oh, so the single yeah, largest? Single largest well, it is facilities. huge because yeah. it took us and we can't really film around other than this because there's so many prototypes that we're looking at now. Um, but it took us a good five minutes to drive through the facility to get to this building. Yeah, it's a large facility. <laughs> lots, lots of employees, lots of good stuff happening here. Yeah, and we'll have plenty of videos on this coming into the future. But what I wanted to focus on with you is the topic of a new automaker. We, and you probably see this all the time, we're starting a company, the car's gonna have this much range, it's gonna be ready by this date, but we know they don't have anything really, you know, other than an idea. So how would you, using Magna's technology and Magna's whole uh, corporate enterprise, more or less, take this idea and actually say, hey, here's how you get to start a production. How does this work? Well, it's a, it's a long process, very interesting process. <laughs> Videos but, four hours but, long. <laughs> but let, 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 let's start what we have to offer. I think it's very important to understand what Magna can bring to the table. And I think you mentioned it already, one-stop shop means we can do everything from the first idea, doing a design for a product, the concept work, all the way from engineering to manufacturing. And above that, on, and on top of that, being part of the Magna company. We also have lots of companies that can provide the necessary components and systems for such a vehicle and such a program. Yeah, and, and it, it is just insane and it's hard to communicate to our audience in this one video, so you'll have to stay tuned for all of this series. But um, we're even let's remove Magna a little bit from the yep. picture. You're an expert in this area. What are some of the challenges that a new automaker would face going from you know, an idea that we want to make X and then bringing it all the way through. Of course, they need to make sure that the car meets regulations, designing and then sourcing suppliers. And I don't know, the list goes on I, and on. I, I think what we just mentioned regulation, that's one topic we will take care of. I think the most important aspect is that the customer has an idea with an USB that he has a market for at the end of the day, because it's a very, as you know, a very competitive market within the automotive world. There are a lot of new companies trying to enter the market at this point, uh, while also the traditional OEMs, the large OEMs, they're also in the transition phase, uh, introducing new products with new features and new power train solutions. So very competitive market. So very, very important is that you have a USP, a product that the customer wants to buy at the end of the day. So once we understand through our engagement with the potential customer, yes, there is a USB, that is a great idea, that we really could sell in the market. This is when we then look a little bit deeper and start to convert the idea into a design and a concept. And at that point in time, we already give our customers a first idea. What will it take? What will it take in terms of financial resources, human resources and timing? Very, very important because cash and financial resources are always a constraint. So ideally, you want to get the product into the market very fast so that you obviously generate some income as soon as possible. So once we have that first concept done, including what it takes to bring the product to market, 
then it's really a joint decision. Are all the resources available that we can execute the program? So yeah. it's pretty much the first phase until you really push the button and get going. With yeah, the so, so that's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. So the hardest part is just getting everything lined up yes. ahead of time. Yes. And um, yeah, are you finding that most of these new entrants, because you're engaging with probably everyone who has an idea, I would imagine, <laughs> uh, but are, are you finding most of them are electric or are they combustion? Yeah, yeah. or 99% no, are really electric. I really? think that's also the the window of opportunity that still exists but will close over time uh, where new companies can get a market share when they introduce an electric vehicle while the traditional oems are still in the transformation phase themselves this is an opportunity for new entrants and can you talk a little bit maybe about how this relationship everyone knows fisker and magna are working yep. together they approached you with a design heinrich is an amazing designer yes he um, is. and then and then how did magna sort of help i know on a high level high level yeah actually Hendrik approached us uh with the idea of uh the ocean yeah uh, and he was looking for support from an engineering and manufacturing perspective. He has a strategy to go asset light. That means he focuses on the design, the product and the customer experience and the customer journey. While he was looking for a partner who takes care of the engineering and all the assets that goes along with it, like our plant here in Graz. So we came to a conclusion that this could become a very good partnership for both parties. And here we are uh, getting ready for the first products. Everyone is so excited about this. <laughs> yeah. I can't tell you how many comments we get. Find out about the Fisker, see what's coming. Um, but do you feel like everything's pretty close at this point for this car? I mean, it, it's challenging like every program. So whenever you do a program, you have unexpected uh, issues. Uh, especially in times where we're in right now, you know, with uh, pandemic, yep. uh, shortage, uh, shortages in the supply chain, and last but not least, also the Ukraine conflict, a lot of challenges, but we are staying ahead of the game and I'm confident that we will successfully launch the product. Amazing, well, I can't wait to see that when it comes time. Uh, I think, you know, to summarize more or less, new automakers don't necessarily have all of the capacity, the capabilities, and honestly, the amount of people, the raw people, manpower needed to bring a full on, full production model to market. I think that's where a solution like what you bring with Magna Steyr comes in and helps quite a bit. Uh, and obviously you build some of the best cars on the planet. You yes. build G-Wagons. Yes. So, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> that's just, you know, that's the only thing you need on the resume. Amongst many other great cars. Yes. Every car that we build is a great car. Yeah, well, you know, I actually owned my first car was a Mini Countryman built yes. here. Yep. Cool. And so a little bit of uh, my love of cars comes from this place. And uh, yeah, I can't thank you enough for the quick chat. And if you have any advice to new automakers, what would you share with them? Come and talk to Magnus Dyer first. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Got to stay on the sales pitch. Thanks okay. so much, Kurt. I thanks, appreciate Kyle. it. That was yeah. awesome. So a huge thanks to Kurt for sharing how some of these processes go. But Manfred's here. Hey, great to see you. Hi, nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Uh, he's going to explain some of the, the initial early days, you know, when we're a lot of our audience, for example, hears of an idea or we, we get approached from people say, hey, I want to make this, I, I want to do that. Mm. You're involved from that literal moment of the early, early days. What, what's that like and how do you even get in contact with these people? Indeed, yeah, thanks for having the opportunity to, to tell to your audience how it is really happening. Yeah? yeah. I think what's important to make you understanding once you have a car on the road, you start already five, six years before. Yeah? So it's not something you deal with one year. So it's already five, six years before you have the first idea. And then it's like, I don't know, when you compare it with cooking, what do you want to go for? Fish, meat, waggy. Right, and there yeah. you have a first idea. What do I want to do even? Yeah? Is yeah. it about an SUV? Is it about a super sports car? This is something usually our customers have in mind. Yes. And then they approach us and it's just still a little bit white sheet of paper. And yeah. then you break it down. You say, okay, good. This is maybe the segment. Then you start thinking on which region. Is it North America, Europe, Japan, or worldwide approach? And then you break it down. We call it customer market profile. Mm. Those are the top 10 to 20 criteria. You say, I want to have a widest range or I want to be the off-roadest car or whatever. And and then you start comparing it with somehow what's available right now on the market. And I say, 
I want to be best in class in this area and maybe do some trade-offs here. And sure. this is, you shape the first ideas and bring it on the so-called customer market profile. Hmm. This to combine with a uh, first idea of a feature list that you say I want to have a, a kind of an, you know, special equipment on the interior or all wheel driven or even some basic configuration. This you try to merge and the next step would be then on doing a VTS, a vehicle target system, yep. which is more like, you know about it, no? so physical target. So it's yep. then really KPH, top speed or acceleration zero to 100. And this you break down onto then multiple documents. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine already, it's not something that you sit together in a two days workshop, but, oh, that's everything <laughs> done. Yeah. It takes a while and you do iterative loops. And once this is finished, this is maybe then the product vision. And, and how would you get someone? So do you, I guess even earlier on, do you just get an email out of the blue that says, hey, we want to make a no. car? No. Or how does this work? Yeah, it's depending on. So you, you met Kurt before, he's yep. from sales. Yeah? Yep. And they are typically the, the door opener sometimes. Yeah? Yeah. And it happens like this, that you say, oh, I need you. Yeah? So a customer yep. comes along and I heard about you at a one-stop shop yeah? Yeah. and I have some just as an idea. And I want you to, to make me have bring this, uh, bringing this idea onto the road. Right. And then it's quite usual to have really face-to-face. -face. So it's not about emails, it's not about only talking, to get to know each other, sit together in a meeting room and, and really understand those at the background. What do you really intend for? Uh, is it, you know, going for mass production or is it like, you know, small volume production? Same as I mentioned with the example of the meal, yeah? Right. Do you want to build up a whole chain on the right. globe or is it just, okay, I want to have my cuisine, uh, right. my chef working here for a few dedicated customers, huh? Right, really interesting. And that to me, it's, it's sort of fascinating and I'm not sure how automakers would bring a car to market, especially new ones, without all of this infrastructure because the thing that Magna has to offer, especially to new automakers that we've done some explaining to our audience about is um, contract manufacturing is nothing new. Anyone can build a factory and put this in. But when someone approaches you with an idea, you can say, oh, you want headlights. Well, you also make headlights and yes, so you can put yes, those in. Yes. Oh, you want driver assistance. Oh, well, you have that whole system. You could slap that in. Mm. Oh, you want seats. Well, you could put these new free form, cool seats in there and mm. make this sort of new material. Is this indeed. something you're finding that people are going for all of these options? I indeed. No? So I think it's uh, on the very first beginning, usually with this new entrance comes along a styling idea and design idea. Yeah. And, you know, it's sometimes hardly uh, possible for them to get this automotive requirements incorporated. Sure. No? And this is even the first equipment, as you mentioned, is to have a power wall, start drawing, start sketching, and bring it into a shape that is really fitting to automotive needs. Right, you because know there's so regulation for pedestrian Regulations, impact. tons of regulations on the one hand from the legal perspective, yeah. but also what we are capable for to think about you care. So it's not only about the regulation, you have some on top, Mm. Or think also about the rating, everyone counting the stars. So I want to do a five stars right, on yeah, NCAP yeah. or whatever rating. And this is different ideas. And the other one is from the aerodynamics and so on. And this bring into these early stages. And this is already, I would say, the first equipment you need. So it's to build up uh, first uh, scaled models even. You start with one to four. Even okay. clay, so yeah. this is really handcrafted yeah. uh, and make some clay models, you put it to the wind tunnel. We do this. Wow, yeah, cool. We can yeah. do this. Uh, and we go to the wind tunnel, we test it, do some iterative loops, form the shape. We call this this design technic convergence. Uh, technic experience guys. Uh, and the other one, oh, I'm the creative, right, I'm the yeah. fancy and one. You just and they <laughs> are, but you have to allow them to do this game. Yeah. Because the designers are the ones to make it sexy, yeah, yeah, to make yeah. it then saleable at the end. The techniques, the engineers say, oh, I'm usually built a traditional one. Right. And this is, I, we discussed before about this product vision phase and then in the feasibility you do like so, what I just explained before. And then it turns into the next stage when you really go for prototypes. But this is then already really hardware. You have to go for investment and answering your question. Sorry for multiple talking, no, no, but that's great. I think it's clear so that you need then not only the car, <clears throat> you need the components to make the car even working together. And this is, as you're saying, 
<clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, it's about the lamps. It's about the transmission. It's about uh, the drivetrain. Yeah. It's about you know everything. Yeah? And this is exactly what we also call it's we model. In the first step, you have to break down from the overall requirements, as I mentioned, customer market profile, feature list, to tangible, concrete spec books. And mm -hmm. there you have to write tons of them, yeah? right. some hundreds even. And this is then covering <clears throat> all the requirements from overall business wise from technical wise and then make a detailed explanation and this is happening during this visibility phase what the beginning and of so the basically of this this initial v that you're talking about is really just breaking that vision into uh individual products and individual yeah. processes that yeah. could go into production yes and this is something what makes it also then I would say challenging for the project management, so as I am doing, uh, to make a consistent setup. Yeah, because right. you have to have hundreds of people then getting involved already in this stage from the different disciplines. And uh, this is something what you have to already integrate into the specifications. And what we follow, it's the idea of a so-called simultaneous engineering. Mm -hmm. So it's not about only the engineers. So we bring in already manufacturing engineering guys and we bring in already the supplier related guys. So the purchasing and, and supplier quality assurance to determine already the requirements in these early spec books. Mm. And when we approach them to the supplier, oh, they have already quite a good sense. And uh, I guess my my other question is when you're working with an automaker especially a startup yeah. some of them might have really good technical abilities or really good design abilities mm -hmm. and you even work of course with existing automakers you know we, we talked a little bit about the g-class earlier you're working Indeed. with yeah. some of the biggest and every biggest automaker pretty much um, how do you basically tailor that relationship with that customer so that you're not providing things that they want to do and they're utilizing you for what's most efficient. How does this work? Is everyone must be different then? Listening. Yeah. Listening what they really want to do and then provide opportunities. And I would say, as you mentioned, now some of them of these new entrants, they have expertise, <clears throat> some even less, uh, but then it's more important to show the opportunities. And this yeah. is something, in a traditional OEM or engineering suppliers, other engineering suppliers, they say, please, dear OEM, tell me what to do, I will do for you. And we do the flip side. We say, these are the opportunities and we can select together what's the best choice. Yeah, that's, that's the real key difference that I uh, mm -hmm. didn't know and am learning is that you know, someone can come to you with an idea. You have your own test facility, you have your own powertrain facility, mm -hmm. you can literally make the car. Yes. Which is yeah. pretty interesting. Yes. You can do it virtually, as mentioned before, and you do. I think this is also something you do is certain hardware, although we call it virtual development, but you need certain hardware. And this can be, as I mentioned before, this K level model. So yeah. I even go up to one to one models for the wind tunnel. You build up uh, seating packs, also, for example, yeah, mm -hmm. that you check the ergonomics. Uh, a lot of things can be done already on CAE. Mm -hmm. uh, so you build up finite element models, uh, which getting super complicated at the end. Yep. Uh, but then you do the structural analysis. You do already crash tests virtually before you then really go for hardware uh, right. to, to save the investment. Right. And this is also important for a lot of new entrants because on the one hand they have good ideas, but they cannot afford typically to say, and now I spent hundreds of millions in the first months. Right. They want to get a little bit feeling and evidence that this could really work and this is what we are providing to them. That's really amazing. I, I think it's it's pretty fascinating. I kind of want to come up with my own car idea and let's build it. Yes, let's uh, do but so. We, the problem is we could come up with all the ideas, but we don't have the financial backing to do this. So you should subscribe and like this video. <laughs> and right. thanks so much for telling thanks, us a Carl. little bit about how this works. Thanks. Yeah, all right. appreciate it. A huge thanks to Kurt and Manfred for telling us all about how a new vehicle automaker may choose to go the route of Magna and actually have them do anything from engineering to all the way up to start of production. In the link in the description, we'll also have it as a pinned comment. There is a, a link to bring you to Magna's website that can tell you about all the individual services that they can offer. It's actually fascinating. Even if you're just a viewer and not an automaker, <laughs> I would encourage you to go because there's so many things that go into vehicles that we don't think about on a daily basis. And it really gives you a good idea of how everything is broken down in the uh, early days of starting an automotive company. Well, thanks so much for watching another Out of Spec Reviews video. See you from Graz. We got more coming. Bye-bye.